This is actually the second response, but you're not going to find the first one that I responded to because I wasn't happy with the video. And in it, I tried to answer all the questions that the individual asked. I'm no longer going to do that. I'm only going to tackle one at a time. And in this video, we're going to talk about dry venting the wet vent system. So let's go ahead and get started with our first example. And I don't think the first example is going to work, even though we have rotated the Y fitting 45 degrees, which is usually going to be the minimum, that you can connect a vent that is required to be vertically connected. And I know that sounds confusing, but you're allowed to connect vertically at a 45 degree angle for this situation here. And you would need to go up another 45 degrees if you make a connection below the flood level rim, which is usually going to be located 42 inches above the floor. And the reason why I'm suggesting you can't use this right here is because this is about a 30 degree angle here. And according to some of the plumbing information I've gathered, so far, you're not allowed to be less than a 45 degree angle. However, I welcome any comments on this. And as always, please provide us with a building code reference numbers. So let's scratch this one off the list and go to our next one where we're going to come up at a 45 degree angle and then use a street 45 to connect to either another street 45 or a regular 45 and then go right out the roof with this one or again I can connect this to another vent also. So I do not see a problem with this example here or this example here where we're going to be coming up at a 90 degree bend using a Y and another 45 degree street connector. So again, no problem with this one. And I can locate this connection here within the maximum trap arm connection between the trap and the vent. And this is another one of those problem areas between the building code books. One of the books suggests that the maximum length is 8 feet. The other suggests that it is 5 feet for a 2 inch pipe. Again, these are the problems I'm going to try and address throughout this series. And of course, another way to vent this would be with a sanitary tee. And the sanitary tee could also be rotated at a 45 degree angle or above the center line of the pipe. And the only thing I don't like with this connection right here, and I really wouldn't ever use it, is because something like this might have a difficult time getting a plumbing snake through where a combo or a Y type fitting might be a little bit easier just in case you ever had to deal with a clog here and you didn't have a clean out located in this area. And I would definitely install a clean out in this pipe. Clean outs are cheap insurance policies for the future building occupants. So basically have a wet vent from here to here and then from here to here. And we're going to go ahead and use a dry vent over here with a combo fitting coming off horizontally and then going up with a sweep. I rarely use short 90s. I use sweeps for everything, including my vents if I have the room. And that usually is going to have something to do with running a snake through the vent pipes because it's going to go through a longer fitting a little bit easier than it will a shorter fitting most of the time or at least common sense suggests that it will do that. Now in the last part of the video I want to show you the problems that the other plumbers had with this and that was running this vent pipe horizontally. And if you can find a plumbing code that allows that, feel free to share it with us. However, I haven't found one. So if we have this fitting here up at a 45 degree angle or higher, then I really don't see where we're going to have a problem using this. This would be a dry vent coming into here and then all of the wastewater would come down below this. And I just have a difficult time thinking that this will get clogged up. And the fact that I've seen this done numerous times. Now I do have pictures of a project that I worked on a few years ago. If you're interested in seeing how the plumber used a horizontal connection for the vent pipe. And for those of you who are interested in watching the first video, I went ahead and attached it to this one here so you wouldn't have to go look for it. 
This is going to be the first video in a series of videos I plan on making about plumbing, drain, and vent connections, what might or might not work, and what might or might not be approved by your local building department. So let's go ahead and get started with a setup that will probably work just fine. I don't think you would ever have any problems with it. However, it does not meet most of the building codes from the main building code books. And the reason for that is because this section right here crosses over or goes through the upper section of the wet vent. So we have a wet vent going from here to here, and this wet vent is serving the shower and the toilet. So we have a wet vent here going to the sink and then a dry vent going through the roof. And then the water, of course, is gonna be draining down this way. And of course, one of the reasons why I'm going to be making these videos will be to allow do-it-yourselfers and plumbers to chime in. Just keep in mind that some plumbers or do-it-yourselfers might be providing you with the wrong information. Trust me, I've already had that happen more than once. And as long as the information someone is providing you with can be backed up or supported by some type of building code reference number, then you should definitely pay attention. So in case I didn't make myself clear, the water coming out of the toilet is going to come down here and run through the upper section of the pipes. And in order for a wet vent to work properly, the upper section of the pipes should not have any water running through it or blocking or restricting the vent airflow. So to fix this, all we would need to do would be to rotate the fitting 90 degrees to where it will enter from the side. And hopefully by the time it gets here, it will not be entering into the upper part of the wet vented system. And another thing that I did here was put a reducer on so that the water from here will slope down here and then run through the pipe. In the previous example, I was using a flush bushing reducer that wouldn't allow a smooth transfer from one pipe to another like this reducer would. However, I don't know if that will affect your building codes. I haven't came across anything that suggests you can't use either one of the reducer fittings. And of course, if you can't rotate the combo fitting for the toilet, then something like this will work also to where we have the dry vent coming down to the sink, the wet vent going through here and stopping right here to vent the toilet and the shower. And since you're allowed to have one fixture coming off of the back of the wet vent, then something like this should work. And then, of course, the wet vent will be servicing the shower. Just make sure that if you're using a two inch pipe for your shower drain, which is usually the minimum requirement, that you cannot be longer than eight feet from the trap to the double Y connection. And a similar setup to this one right here is actually what motivated me to make the video series because this didn't look right. Next up, let me see if I can provide you with a better explanation of how the water would basically be flushing out of a toilet and then dropping in from above and basically running through the upper part of the wet vented section and blocking it temporarily. So this one right here isn't going to work. However, this one will. And I realize this looks exactly the same as the other one, but it isn't because this one here is actually this one over here. Remember how the toilet drained into a long 90, came down here, and then connected to the drain pipe with a combo fitting. And hopefully with this example and the square pipes, I'm gonna be able to make my point. If not, let me know if you're having a problem or let me know that it actually made sense because this is a difficult thing for even plumbers with years of experience to wrap their mind around. And trust me, I've been in the business for 40 years as a general contractor and it just recently started to make sense to me so that's why I'm trying to share it with you so that you can better understand how a wet vent works so again the water is going to travel down below the upper section allowing air to travel in the upper section of your pipe so as long as the upper section of the pipe is unobstructed the water is going to flow right through here without any problems, or I should say, hopefully without any problems, you could have a clog somewhere. And when the water is coming through the shower, it should also occupy the lower half of the pipe. Again, allowing the air that we're gonna use to keep the water flowing with our wet vent to occupy the upper area. 
And if that makes sense, we can go ahead and add our sink drain or the wet vent that is connecting to the side of the pipe here and leading up to the sink and then through a dry vent the rest of the way through the roof. So this is where we're going to be getting our air from. So as the water drains in this direction, it's going to pull air from this pipe here. It's going to pull any air it needs from the dry vent above the sink to allow the water to keep flowing. So if we didn't have a vent here and all we had was a drain going to the shower and a drain going to the toilet, every time we flush the toilet, it's going to be looking for air and trying to suck the air out of the shower trap. And then when we run the shower, the shower is going to be looking for air. It's going to want to try and pull the air out of the toilet. And if it can't pull air from the toilet, it's going to be pulling all the air it needs through the shower drain. And this will create obstacles in the drain pipe, forcing the water to move slower. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up by providing you with a couple of more things that you might need to know about this situation. Now, if I move this forward and use this as a wet vent setup, I'm going to have two fixtures behind the connection, and that's not going to make the inspector happy. Where with this setup here, we're back to having one fixture coming off and then one connecting to the same spot that the wet vent is connecting to. And if I was going to move the shower in front of the sink drain, then I might be breaking another building code. And that would be the fact that the toilet needs to be the furthest fixture downstream of the wet vent. And that wouldn't be the case here, where the shower is now the furthest fixture downstream connecting to the wet vent. Again, something that might not work with your local building codes. And if I wanted to do a setup like this, where I have a dry vent coming off of the toilet arm and providing us with a little more air for our wet vent system, suggesting that the wet vent would now go from here to here or from here to here, again, creating a possible problem for the shower being the furthest fixture downstream or the sink connection, whichever way you look at it. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this or provide you with a couple of different perspectives along with the possibility that this might be your only option because of the way the floor framing joists are laid out and whether or not you can bring this vent up into a wall. And even though I drew this in and it might work, I think this situation will work better. And I'm not about to suggest you need to bring this this far down. You could always move it closer to the toilet or the sweep or short sweep connector. And the reason why I think this is going to work better is because now we're back to the toilet being the farthest fixture located downstream. And if there was ever any water to rush through the toilet, at a force that somehow could create enough suction to pull the water out of the shower trap. It probably won't happen now because we have a vent here. So something like this is going to work a little bit better and I don't see any problem with this being approved by your local building department. And of course, all of this will depend upon whether or not you're gonna be able to vent through the wall framing or somehow vent through the floor framing and then vent through the wall framing. 